This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're now going to look at uh, something called break-even analysis. And, as always, to explain uh, what it is and um, the techniques that are needed, uh, look with me straight in the example, example one. Project X has variable costs of $2 a unit. They have a selling price of $6 a unit. The fixed costs are 1000 a year. And part A, no special technique needed here, it says if we're budgeting on selling and producing 300 units, what's the budgeted profit or loss for the year? Now you can set this out several ways, but uh, I think the quickest way is to say, well, we're selling 300 units, each unit gives a contribution, and you should remember what I mean by that from earlier chapters. The contribution is the selling price of $6 a unit less the variable cost of $2. So there's a contribution of $4 a unit. Uh, and therefore, the total contribution will be 1200 now the contribution, remember, is the profit before any fixed costs or the revenue less the variable costs. So here the total contribution is 1200 To get the profit, subtract the fixed costs. Of 1000 and we'd end up budgeting on a profit of 200 so I say no special technique there, but all right, you don't have to use contribution, but I think it speeds things up. Uh, however, that's if we're budgeting on 300, but of course, whatever we budget on, the actual sales may turn out to be higher, they may turn out to be lower. And what's desperately important to, I think, any business is to know how many do they need to be selling to at least be making a profit? What I'm getting at is if they sell more than 300, obviously, the contribution goes up, fixed costs stay the same, the profit gets higher. But if they sell less than 300 units, the contribution gets lower. Fixed costs will stay at 1,000. Clearly, there'll come a time, potentially, when we're loss-making. Well, B asks us for the break-even point. And break-even, by definition, is when we make zero profit, zero loss. And so if we're wrong on our budget, and if it's not 300 units, but we end up selling less, how many do we need to sell to end up with no profit and no loss? Well, surely think about it. Whatever happens, the fixed costs are going to be a thousand. To end up with a profit of zero, the contribution will have to be a thousand as well. Well, we know the contribution per unit is four dollars. And so to end up with a contribution of four dollars uh, uh, of a thousand, a thousand divided by four, it must be 250 units. Now, OK, you can learn the rule, but see the logic. To end up with zero, total contribution must be equal to the fixed costs. The unit sold must be the total contribution divided by the contribution per unit. The break even in units is equal to the fixed costs divided by the contribution per unit. And do learn that, but as always, see the logic, just don't simply learn a rule. So again, in this particular one, the fixed costs are a thousand. The contribution per unit, the revenue six, cost two, contribution of four, 
it's 250 units. And again, what's so important, they're budgeting on 300, they hope it will be 300, but they accept budgets can be wrong, it may be more, maybe less. But as long as we sell more than 250 units, at least we'll make a profit. If we ever sell less than 250 units, then we'll be making a loss. Uh, C wants to know the break-even revenue. Well, that's easy, surely. We know we need to sell 250 units. Well, 250 units to break even. How much revenue would that generate? Well, the selling price is $6 a unit. And so a total of 1500 So we can look at it either way. As long as we sell more than 250 units, we'll make a profit. Or as long as um, uh, we get more than 1500 revenue will make a profit. Uh, I said a minute ago, don't simply learn a rule, you know, understand it. And the reason it's important is for something like D. For D, you can't really learn a rule, but if you understand what I've done, it's easy. It says, how many units would we need to sell to achieve a profit of 300 a year? Well, remember, the profit's always the total contribution, less the fixed costs. Uh, we know the fixed costs will be a thousand. We want to end up with a profit of 300. And therefore, how much contribution must we earn? The contribution working backwards must be 1300. And how many units do we need to sell to get a total contribution of 1300? Well remember it's four dollars per unit contribution and so we need to sell to get 1300 in total, four dollars for each unit, we need to sell Uh, 325 units. So it's not hard. Learn the break-even rule. Uh, but again, uh, understand where it comes from and then a question like D uh, should be no problem at all. Uh, back to where we were. Remember here we had budgeted on 300. On selling 300, that's what we hope to sell and we'll make a profit. But we know that if the budget's wrong, we do need to sell at least 250 to be profitable. Well, that allows us to calculate, if you like, how far wrong our budget can be. And it's something called the margin of safety. And as you'll see, it's, it's how wrong we can afford our budget to be. You see, we've budgeted on selling 300. I keep saying that may be wrong, we may sell fewer, but provided it's more than the break-even 250, we'll still make a profit. So we can afford the budget to be wrong by 50 units before uh, we start making a loss. However, to leave it as just 50 units, it'd be a bit dangerous. You see, 50 units is quite a big error in our budget when we budgeted on 300. Had I been budgeting on 5,000, to be wrong by 50 units is a very tiny error. So we express it as a percentage of our budget of 300. And so the margin of safety, we can afford to be wrong by 50 units on a budget of 300. It's 16.67%. So again, I mean, learn it, it's easy. Uh, over the page, something that's 
quite popular, the CS ratio. Uh, and what the CS stands for is contribution and sales. So as I've written there, it's the contribution divided by the sales. Uh, and so in this case, what's the contribution? The contribution per unit was $4. Uh, the selling price per unit was $6. Or oh, two over three. Uh, by all means, write it as a, de a decimal. If you, oh dear. Write it as um, a decimal or a percent if you want. It's, um, what is it, point uh, 6666666 or 66.666%. Doesn't matter. But what does it mean? It means for every unit we sell, we'll make two thirds profit. So for every three uh, contribution, I beg your pardon. So for every three dollars of revenue, we'll have two dollars of contribution. And it doesn't matter whether I sell one unit or a thousand units. For every three dollars revenue will make $2 contribution. And a use we can uh, put that to, look at example three. What revenue is needed to generate a target profit of 320? Well, think back to what we did earlier. We know always that the contribution less the fixed costs gives us the profit. I want a profit of 320. The fixed costs are a thousand, and so the contribution is 1320. So we need a contribution of 1320. But I know the CS ratio is two thirds, so I know that contribution will always be two thirds of the revenue. So I can write down the revenue almost immediately. Uh, two thirds, remember, is equal to the contribution divided by the sales. Multiply both sides by the sales. It's equal to the contribution. Or the sales, if I divide both sides by two thirds, is the contribution over two thirds. Oh, what's it here? Well, the contribution, we need 1320. If you divide that by two thirds, or 0 0.6666666, what do we get? One nine eight zero. The revenue must be 1980. Now, I know you could have done it other ways, but that can be useful. I can check it. Clearly, 1980, the revenue is $6 a unit. So how many units? 1980 over 6 is 330 units. And how much contribution? Well, the contribution, uh, what was it, $4 a unit? Thirteen twenty, which of course is what we wanted. So, I mean, there's more than one way you could have done it, but there are times when this is by far the most efficient. And so do learn this, that the sales revenue will always equal uh, the total contribution divided by the CS ratio. Uh, let me give you uh, just one more example. It's not in the notes, I'll make it up, but a way that it could be needed. Suppose uh, I tell you um, the CS ratio for our product is 0.4. Fixed costs are 2,000. 
what revenue is needed to break even? Now here, of course, you don't know selling price per unit. You don't know uh, cost per unit. But I do know this, do I, uh, do I not? That uh, if the fixed costs are 2,000, to break even, we need total contribution must be 2,000, must be equal to the fixed costs. And I know the CS ratio is 0 0.4, so I know that always the contribution is 0 0.4 times the revenue. Well, since I know the contribution, we can write straight down the sales revenue. Contribution over the CS ratio 5,000. The break-even revenue uh, is 5,000. All right, well, that's almost it. There are, however, two charts that you're expected to be aware of. Uh, you won't be expected to draw them, but you, you're expected to know what they are and be able to interpret them. So, key what we've done in front of you, because for the same example, uh, example one, uh, in the next lecture, and I'll split this into two, in the next lecture, uh, I'll draw these two charts.